Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. We are outside today. It's a beautiful summer morning. I wanted to share with you the noises that I hear as I am on a morning walk. It's quite peaceful, actually. I hope it kind of permeates the energetics of this recording. You know that energy is such a big deal. And oftentimes it comes at us like a frying pan in the face. Well, today, hopefully, as you are listening to this, it'll come to you as just a soft, gentle gift. Maybe a blanket that you can lay on the grass, have a nice little picnic, or maybe a nap if you need to rest. So today our topic is going to be deadlines. Deadlines. I had a friend say to me the other day, which is a quote from either a book or a podcast or something, so it's not unique, okay? But none of us are getting out of here alive. Which, I mean, it's true. This thing called life, right? We are not getting out of this alive. And you can receive that one of two ways. You can think of it as this horrible bad sentence thing like oh everything's bad and that means oh my gosh life is just hard and we're doing all this work for nothing or you can perceive it as hey it's worth the risk it's worth it it's worth the life the living is worth it the experiences are worth it. Yeah, there's some bad stuff. Yeah, there's some hard stuff. Yeah, there's some really sad emotions and heavy stuff that happens and stuff that really sucks. And there's also some incredibly beautiful things. Just walking into the dang grocery store. Let me just tell you, I do not like grocery shopping. Not usually, although I'm coming around to it because I'm kind of getting into the different veggies and all that and learning new things about veggies and etc. But rocking into the grocery store there's a lineup of flowers like a ton so I was recently this spring in Seattle and I walked into the like the Whole Foods or the Trader Joe's and you walk in and there's just tons of flowers lined up I mean on but just so beautiful beautiful I'm like in that tiny little moment grocery shopping just got a lot better the colors the variety the beauty Life is about all of the moments. It's a collection. It's like a scrapbook. It just seems like sometimes the thorns on the roses are what we feel the most. We might see the beauty of the rose, but can we feel it? Can you really feel it? So this is the challenge. This is the ask, the invitation. The topic of deadlines is really about recognizing that there is a line in the sand, my good friends. There's a line in the sand. Sooner or later, this body that is carrying you will stop. And unfortunately, or maybe maybe it's okay with you, you can't trade it in like a car. You can't just get a new vehicle, a new bodicle. It doesn't work like that. Sooner or later your body will stop and your mind might keep going. You might have a time to reflect on your life, which I have seen in the death process, such as in the story with my dad, where there is definitely a life review, a reflection upon life, whether it's conscious or unconsciously happening, it happens. What will yours be like? And this isn't just like an end of life thing. Like I've lived a full life looking back over my life. It's at any point in your life. There are deadlines in every part of your life if you think about it. There are deadlines. Well, okay, so let's just say sometimes we can push deadlines, negotiate them, right? We can move them. They have wiggle room, right? They're not set in stone. All of them are not. All of them are not set in stone. Even taxes, you can get an extension, even with having children. It's not just reliant solely on your body's ability to create them or of the age at which is 
traditional to have them. So there's some flexibility in deadlines, but deadlines could be perceived as some milestones or mile markers like graduation. We just celebrated a high school graduation in my house. Maybe you did too. That was a deadline, wasn't it? A point at which something is complete. Whether you're ready for it to complete or not, sometimes things just complete. Sometimes deadlines don't exist to see what you're made of. They exist so you won't stay longer than you need to. I'm going to say that again. (coughs) Deadlines don't always exist because you have to prove what you're made of, but they exist so that you don't stay too long in an area of your life that you don't need to be in any longer. Deadlines signify the opportunity to move on. A doorway, whether you're walking into a new house or moving out of your house. A doorway. A deadline is not a you have value or you don't, you're good or you're bad. It is a milestone. A way to check yourself along this journey. And they exist for a reason. So that you can have opportunities to check yourself. Is this what I want? If you missed the deadline to apply for that job, maybe it just wasn't the right timing for you. Even if the job was so perfect and you just happened to forget because you thought it, it was a nine instead of a six. And it was, really a, it was really a six. And so the 16th passed, but the 19th is what you thought. And all oh, forgive yourself and move on. You missed that deadline because it wasn't for you. That round was not yours. Deadlines sometimes come in the form through relationship of ultimatum. This or that. And yeah, deadlines can seem it's either going to be this or it's going to be that. It's a choice. It's a black and white like the stripes on the zebra, right? Or the panda bear. Discernment, clarity, black and white. Light and shadow. What are you going to choose? If we look, if we look at everything, even the deadlines with all, that, are, that come through ultimatums, like either you're going to do this or you're going to do that, it is still a choice. There's always a point in the center of choice. There's always a choice point. Find the center. Stand in the center. Drop into your physical body. Feel your energy in the earth. Connect it to this lifetime now, to where you're at on this timeline. Because if you follow anything to do with psychic work or astrologers or anything, you know the timeline stuff, it's a real deal. Some believe, like I do, like time is layered like a Subway sandwich. And lots is happening at once. Lots of different levels that you have access to by just getting in an elevator. But that does you no good. Even knowing that timelines are are open or or squishy or you can move things up and manifest or you can go back uh, 30 years <laughs> and recreate old policies, old rituals, old traditions. Both can happen. But it's choice point that gives us the opportunity to move freely between our inner world, what we know within ourselves, what we want, what we desire, and the external expression of who we are as a soul and how we contribute to life itself and how life gives us information such as through deadlines, doorways, thresholds. And sometimes that does come through ultimatums. Ultimatum. I'm going to give you an ultimatum. Either it's this or it's that. Oftentimes when ultimatum comes in, it does land heavy, doesn't it? Just that word itself, boom, lands heavy, doesn't it? Like, Okay, this is a bad situation. Either you're going to do this or you're going to do that, but we're going to fix this. Kind of feels like a, we're going to fix this vibe, doesn't it? Which if you follow any kind of healing work, you are starting to recognize that, oh my gosh, we have all been sold this concept of fix, fix, fix. We need to be fixed. We need to be better because we're not good enough as we are. Even the self-help fix it stuff, the spirituality, the personal growth stuff that you can buy and purchase. It is designed to support you on your path, not to fix you. 
because there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You're just not in the center point to make the decision. So when the energy of an, of, a, of an intensive choice comes in or a deadline comes in and you have to make a choice, in the moment of the deadline is not the time to make the choice. And the place of your center with the timing layered in an alignment, a nice, healthy, clear alignment pattern, kind of like a ladder, that's the place to make the decisions. And there's always choice, even in a bad circumstance, even what you perceive as bad, difficult, hard, emotionally challenging, or let's just be clear. Personally, for me, in my experience, I've had a hard time lately the last few months trying to make even simple decisions. I will stand at Target. I was trying to buy curtains because I got a curtain story for you. I was trying to buy curtains for a new office room that we are creating for me, for my work, for you, for me, for Bridget, for my essence to fill that space. That's a lot, right? Because I got a lot of essence, you know, and a lot of different colors and all this stuff. So trying to pick curtains, can you imagine? Which chakra am I going to choose? Which one? I went neutral, by the way. Neutral, neutral. But in a cool way, very textured neutral, very pattern textured neutral. I'll have to share pictures at some point. When it's done, I promise I will. I'll do videos in there so you'll see. But my point is, it's hard, it was hard to make decisions. Like, it's been hard. Like, even standing at the coffee shop. I've talked about this on other Sunday morning coffees. There's so, it's overwhelming. There's so many choices, right? So that, what the, all that means is you can't go wrong. You can only go right. Even if you order something and it's bad or like I got, so I got these beautiful, I got like three sets of curtains, brought them all home, decided to look at which one fit, this one fit. The one that I chose happened to have a snag in it. Instead of going, oh, I got a snag in my curtain. This is awful. Clearly this is not the right choice for me. The universe is telling me no, no, no. Oh, come on, please. It's just telling me, Bridge, you got to work a little harder for this one. If this is what you want, Go back to the store and get what you want. And oh, by the way, when you're there, get another set for the other window. Because there's two windows, a patio and a regular window. I'm like, oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. But it can feel difficult to make choices and decisions. And especially when there's ultimatums, it feels like no matter what you choose, it's bad. Or no matter what you choose, it's wrong. Or you have to make a decision between a couple of different choices and none of them are good because you're in a circumstance or situation that is hard. Whether you're trying to choose a doctor or a care facility for your aging parent or grandparent or trying to choose a doctor for yourself that's going to deliver your baby or you're trying to choose a therapist or a counselor for you or your child. These are places where decisions, no matter what decision you make, It's going to feel hard and you're going to question whether it's the right one or not. And you're never really going to know for sure. But what you can do is find your center point. Feel that laddering of energy that's like a scaffolding supporting you with the time, without pressure of time, but a separation. If you think of time like literally like like floors in an apartment building and it's like cut open like a kid's dollhouse so you can see it or like a ladder um, actually, you know, it's interesting. I usually talk about it like a cell, a cell phone tower. Do you know what I mean? Those long, super tall towers with, with, um, and they're kind of tri- almost triangular shaped point at the top, almost a little obelisk like, obelisk like, you know what I mean? And, but with very clear platforms of levels or stages, because you don't have to know what's above you or below you. You just know it's there. And where you're at, you're in your center point, you're at the exact right moment in time that you're making the best choice that you can. And at some point, if you're up a level or down a level, you will have a different view and you can make a different choice if you need to. Life is filled with choices, decisions that can feel like pressure and overwhelmment, especially energetically, emotionally for empathic people, which we all are. Clearly, has anybody not, has everybody gotten the memo that everybody's empathic, whether they choose to accept it or not? And the people that aren't accepting it are just super relying on their logical minds. And you can tell who those people are because they get really frustrated. When other people aren't rational, the people that are only relying on their logical ego minds, not a bad thing, it's just a survival thing. You can tell. Even they are empathic. They're just resisting the empathic natures of themselves. And they are relying on their mind only. And that's why they get crabby. That's why they're moody. 
That's why they freak out about deadlines. And it seems like they kind of like the stress pressure, but that's not true. They're hiding in it. But that is working for them, at least for now, until they develop stress-like symptoms in their body, like a heart palpitation, high blood pressure, things like that, that will create the choice point, because they'll be at a different time when that happens and manifests, to choose something different, which might be a deeper relationship with themselves, with God within them, with their inner healer, with focusing on their care of life, of walking outside and seeing the beauty, walking into the grocery store instead of rushing past the flowers, they will see the flowers and they will look at the roses and they won't criticize the roses for having thorns. They will look at the roses and they will feel the energy of the rich red rose as a grounded center spot for love. An overarching symbol of love. And that is really what's at the core. That's what this is all about. All right, my friends. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. You can find me on social media, Bridget Inspired on Instagram, Bridget Inspired on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube, as you know, Above Life Channel, where every Monday I share an interesting conversation with an afterlife celebrity guest because I'm a psychic medium and I'm an intuitive life coach. I work with clients in private sessions as well. I will share service offerings on my Bridget Inspired Facebook page most often. That's how you can kind of catch what's going on with me. You can also follow me on my more casual intuitive YouTube channel, which is Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube, where I share my vlogs and about my psychic life. I talk about energy and um, interesting topics like angels and deities and spirit guides and totem animals. And I do live streams on there as well. And so very grasshopper on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.